Welcome everyone. Just give me a moment to find where we are on this. I'm a little behind on what I'm doing this morning. I apologize for that. Um, Okay, and I just wanted to bring it up one more place, just in case. There. Welcome. I apologize for that little delay um, as I get myself organized. Um, I'm Reverend Warner Bloomfield, and I welcome you to this this worship service this Sunday morning here on Facebook Live. Um, I am the minister at Grace United Church in Dunville, as you, I'm sure, know since you are on our web, our Facebook page for this. Um, as we be prepare for our time of worship, we do take time for announcements and for sharing of any information. So for all those who are joining us this morning, I would... Uh, welcome you to put anything you wish to share or any any announcements you wish to make in uh, our comments section uh, for this and as we do that um, we take time to hear this uh, ministry of music from gail squires Thank you, Gail. Um, I see a lot of people coming in with uh, with announcements. One from Linda, you can read it, but I'll also make an announcement of it. Uh, donations will be deposited Friday the 15th and the 29th this month. Others can also use transfers if that works better for you. I think she's talking about donations to the church and how that will work out in terms of, I well, I don't want to make assumptions. but. Uh, just so people are aware of her schedule and uh, when you want to, uh, if you wish to place in, put anything in our mailbox. Thank you, Linda, for that. Um, just uh, an, again, an announcement uh, regarding today. Um, we will have communion following this uh, time of worship. Um, we'll continue our worship in a second live feed in which we will celebrate uh, the sacrament of communion. So I certainly would encourage you to uh, stay close to your computer uh, when we close this feed because um, we'll be opening a second one and you can uh, join us for communion. Of course, bring your own elements as we've been doing for the last many months. Um, and I think you can expect us to be continuing in this format for, a few, for some time yet to come, uh, considering 
what we're hearing from the province in regards to uh, the rate of spread of COVID at this time. Um, welcome to everyone. As we prepare to uh, enter into worship, let us uh, join in song as we light our candle and we will sing the first verse of Come Touch Our Hearts, which you'll find in more voices, number 12. to worship today I say we have come once again to be in the presence of the baptismal waters so that we may be reminded that God's love seeps into our lives washes away our fears and pours forth for all people come let us worship and let us pray God we ask that you remind us that you are the source of all that gives us life water earth, warmth, wind, we take these next moments to be still and breathe in your spirit. As you quiet your heart, those who are listening in today, notice the depth and length of your breath. Inhale and exhale. As you inhale, concentrate on the notion of breathing in grace the way we breathe in oxygen. And as you exhale, imagine that you can let go of the one thing that you wish to give to God. Set the pace of your breath and set an intention that you can start to offer yourself, your life, to God a, a little at a time with every exhale. Amen. And now let us join in song once more as we sing, I was there to hear your burning cry, number 644 in Voices United. And Ellie's going, oh dear, because <laughs> she knows what this song does to her emotionally. And I hope that, that I hope this is not a problem for anyone else. I know this is a, a song that is beloved by many in our congregation, um, but it is also one that brings with it some emotion. And you join your hearts as one. 
I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verse from the books. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I apologize. I, I lost my place as I was singing. <laughs> I went back to where I was before. Oh well. I hope everyone enjoyed that and listening to me. <laughs> we take time now for our prayer of confession as we bring before God the ways that we continue to struggle to be the world be the society and the community of faith that God envisions for us. But at the same time, we offer words of assurance, acknowledging that regardless of the ways that we may lose our way, lose the path or trip and stumble, God loves us, God never gives up on us and continues to be there for us. Let us pray. Spirit of forgiveness, we breathe in the fresh scent of your love. We accept you into the depths of our bodies to awaken our desire for change and displace our selfish impulses. God and spirit, you are all around and within us now. Let us exhale and release whatever we hold within that will keep us from filling our lungs and lives with your love. As surely as you continue to draw breath, you can trust that God is entering into your life, one breath at a time, one yawn, one cloud, one breeze at a time. In the air, as close as the air on your skin and in your body, is where forgiveness resides. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Are you ready, Ellie? I'm just really glad I didn't wear mascara. <laughs> I invite Ellie to take my place here so that uh, she can uh, provide this morning's music ministry of music. Coming at 
that the day of to my part unto myself today I bind unto myself today the virtues of the starlit heaven the glorious sun's life giving rain I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead his eye to watch his might to stay his ear to hearken to my need the wisdom of my God to teach his hand to guide his shield to ward the word of God to give me speech his heavenly host to be my guard I bind unto myself the name the strong name of the Trinity by invocation the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word, praise to the Lord of my salvation, salvation is of Christ. Thank you, Ellie. Beautiful. It's not an easy piece of music, that I know. This morning, um, I do have a video to show after I read scripture. We're going to be trying something a little bit different for the next several weeks. Um, there's, we've got uh, these letters that have been written, shall we say. Um, the, part of the, uh, part of the, uh, service resources that I have, um, these imagined letters in regards to passages of scripture we'll be reflecting on. We have one of those this morning that's been per and it's been videoed and uh, read by, by Roger. And for that, I thank you, Roger. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to read the actual scripture just so people know what, where we're coming from. And so this is from Mark 1, chap verses 4 to 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descended like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. May these words be blessed to our understanding. And uh, I now 
turn things over to Roger for a few minutes. A letter to John the Baptizer based on Mark 1, verses 4 to 11. Dear John, I'm writing with the utmost appreciation for your work and admiration for your courageous work. There is no doubt in our minds that you are a gift to us because of your great leadership and spiritual wisdom. This is precisely why we need your help to settle an argument in my household. You see, we've been living peacefully enough, if a bit disconnected from the more faithful of our friends and family members. When we began to hear stories about Jesus' teaching and authority, we became curious. One day, we heard he was going to visit the Jordan to see you. He had heard about you from friends who had been baptized by you, so we thought we could renew our friendship and perhaps boister our faith if we were to visit you when Jesus was also visiting. So we decided to try and match the dates of our visit with the time we heard he would be visiting you. On our way, we began to reflect on how much we hoped you would be the prophet who would help us understand the prophecies that caused us so many arguments in our home. When we arrived, we were caught off guard by the chaos of the crowd. People were agitated when we thought they would be calm. You had people worked up. When we finally caught sight of Jesus, you two were arguing like old rabbis. I must admit, that brought me low, a little comfort. I've seen Sadducees and Pharisees argue. You don't have any passion in their voices. Your conversation with Jesus was different. You were both energetic. My wife and I laughed to see you two argue like the way we argue. It surprised us then that when you stopped arguing, you baptized him. I would have thought you two would never have reconciled as I watched you in conflict with one another. But you made amends as quickly and as passionately as you started in to argue. As you baptized him, I noticed he behaved as one of us. He was humble and at peace as if he were subordinate to you. As we watched him come out of the water, we saw a dove descend. But it was after this that we became especially confused. I heard a voice. I know I heard a voice. My beloved, I am pleased. But I couldn't tell who had spoken. My wife tells me she heard a voice too. Until we talked it over, we thought it was coming from one of the crowd, which would have been strange enough but then we decided there was not one of the elders nearby. We had been arguing about this question. Could it have been the voice of God? Did you hear it? Is Jesus the one we heard about in the prophecies? My wife and I are now arguing like rabbis. Please help restore peace to our home the way you restored the peace with Jesus. Benjamin. Thank you, Roger. I, uh, okay, preparing for my sermon now. In the letter Roger read, he notes the tradition of disagreement, often vigorous, between rabbis. There was rarely uniform agreement between religious authorities and scholars within that tradition. Argument, and I put that in quotation marks, continues to be a significant part of Jewish tradition. And it is one I believe Christianity can take a lesson from. My reflection today is one that could provoke some disagreement, and I am this morning asking several questions. Where do we draw the line between community and individuality? And what is our responsibility as a community of faith? One of the questions posed to me over the years, several times, several different people, is why do we need a prayer of confession? It is fair to say people often do not see themselves in the lists of sins or transgressions that we name. It can seem like an attempt at shaming or making us feel guilty. Or perhaps such confession should be a personal matter between ourselves as individuals and God. Someone must have walked past our house. Well, perhaps. But historically and traditionally, there has been the sense that in coming to God, to listening for the word of God in scripture and the message, 
we symbolically cleanse ourselves through confession and the acknowledgement of pardon. But there is more. We do this as a community. Just as we take time as a community to offer prayer and to pray for our community and the prayers of the people, we as a community, as part of the wider society, confess to that society's sins and seek forgiveness. We name the ways the society has failed or lost sight of the path to a more just and merciful community. We read today about John baptizing people for the repentance of sin. Baptism is in part a welcome to something new. It marks people taking a new direction. It is a sign of transformation, sometimes described as a new birth. Baptism is done in community. For us in the United Church, it is a symbol of formally welcoming people, often children, into our community. And it comes with promises and acknowledgement of responsibilities on both sides. I'm not even good. Oops. Sorry, I'm losing my place. I'm anxious to get moving. <laughs> It is, in fact, an example of the dynamic that exists in our world and in the church of the tension between individual and community. And where do we mark the separation between the person and the community? I'm not even going to begin an attempt at defining that line or where it lies. Throughout history, there has been a question about to what extent do we as individuals identify with a particular community? And that line has certainly shifted over the years. It depends so much on culture and history. At the, at the time that people came to John for repentance and baptism, there was a strong connection between the person and the community. As people came to repent, it was as much about the salvation of community, of Judea, as it was about individual salvation. It was in part personal repentance, but also about the repentance of the society. and the, the people themselves and their part in bringing about that social repentance. And it was into that dynamic that Jesus walks. Was Jesus seeking repentance for his own sin? Not likely from what we are told. Or as part of a society, was he acting for a community salvation? I wonder. It is certainly something for reflection. The heavens are torn apart and the Holy Spirit descends. God, in the person of Jesus, walks among the people as part of those people. We are struggling right now with the line between individual freedom and acting on behalf of the health of our community. Here in Ontario and throughout Canada, the number of people infected by COVID-19 continues to grow. Governments are struggling to slow the spread once again, and we are seeing still some resistance to those actions. I am reluctant to step into that debate with any certitude. That said, I believe we need to ask ourselves, how much do my personal actions and attitude affect the community as a whole? What are my responsibilities to the community that I claim to be a part of? Is it possible to isolate myself completely from the society in which I live? And if possible, would I want to? I am increasingly of the view that we are at a point in our history where things are shifting significantly. Matters such as white supremacy and systemic racism can no longer be brushed aside or denied. 
Many of us have lived comfortably with a status quo that has left a great many people on the outside looking in, in terms of privilege and wealth, and having a voice and a say in what is actually happening within our society. A great many people have been exploited or disregarded for far too long. While many of us as individuals can claim we, are, we were not part of that sin, we are a part of the community or the society or the country that is responsible. In order to forge new and just relationships, forgiveness is needed, and that demands repentance. Perhaps we, on behalf of a community, need to consider our responsibility or our duty in that matter. This is a difficult subject, I know. This is not an attempt to guilt people or accuse people of being racist. Please, please do not take it that way. This is an attempt to say the society to which we belong has benefited from the cruel treatment of many people or peoples. Many would argue that is systemic racism. If we are part of that society, where does our responsibility lie? If we are part of that, can we, as a faith community, lead in our actions and attitude? Baptism marks a time of transformation. Communion, which we will celebrate in a little bit, is a time when we come together, in which we acknowledge and live out physically the way in which we are connected, we, we are one in Christ. We are part of a community. What is our responsibility? May we be transformed through our baptism. May we continue to be connected through our communion with God and through God. And may we be part of working for a just and healing world. And let us never forget that as God created the world, God looked upon it and said, this is good. And as God looked upon Jesus at his baptism as part of that community, he said, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. God loves us. God sees us as good, and God desires for us a world of justice and love and mercy. Let us never forget that. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us take time with song once more as we take time for reflection and to sing, Come to My Heart, number 661 in Voices United.
me to walk in your way. Come to my heart, Lord Jesus, come to my heart today. Give me the peace and joy that only you can bring. Come to my heart, Lord Jesus, give me a song to sing. Fill me with love, Lord Jesus, teach me to walk in your way. Fill me with love, Lord Jesus, fill me with love today. Give me the peace and joy that only you can bring. Fill to our prayers of the people, which I just need to take a moment to find in all my papers. I apologize for that. I thought I was better organized. Today's prayer is not a long one, as we will be going into communion shortly after that, and there's another prayer there, of course. But we take time as a community to offer our prayers for that community. We offer our gratitude and our prayers of concern for those we know and love and those whom we've maybe met once or twice, but also share concern and those we just know of through name in need of God's comfort, God's strength and God's peace. Let us pray. God speaks as we speak to one another of our joy and sorrow. God moves as we draw closer to one another. May we speak aloud of love and pain, offering up the names or circumstances that remind us we belong to one another and God. So we take time in silence to offer our prayers, either spoken aloud typed into the comments or kept in the silence of our hearts where God knows what we have to say. We pray for Dave's brother Bob that he experiences God's healing, and God's love and compassion. for Byron House as he continues to recover from his accident and his injuries. May we remember that we can give and receive, bless and be blessed as we come near the cleansing waters, kiss away tears and drink from the fountains of grace. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now let us 
join in song once more as we sing I See a New Heaven, number 713 in Voices United. Blessing, and I invite you to join in it with the part that is designated for all when we get to that, as we offer our blessings to one another. And now we share in a common practice of blessing one another. Please join in as the words of the blessing become familiar. We will repeat this twice. We may we fail, fail, God, God does, does not. not. We, we may end, God does not. not. Bless and, and be blessed. 
We may fail, God does not. We may end, God does not. Bless and be blessed. Amen. Now as we take our leave, just for a few minutes, and then I ask you to come back. I, it might take a little bit. I have to set things up again on uh, my computer for the next uh, live stream. It shouldn't take too long, but it will take a little bit. And we also have to prepare the space for the communion elements. But uh, as we go forth, let us join in song with singing, Go Make a Difference. We're going to sing it through twice. Gail's going to play it through a couple of times first. part of today's service and also to also want to make sure that I don't forget Silken and her work, uh, her prelude before this service began. So thank you to all of you. And until we gather again very briefly for communion, God bless. Go with God's love. <laughs>